There's a reason why I wanted to show you that I'm doing this in Zoom and I'm not using a virtual camera, although it might look like I am. So uh, this has happened several times over the last two years since we've gone online for most everything. So we'll have a guest speaker come in from uh, around the world, really good people, smart people, creative people, personable, everything. But they often have slides like this and they present it like this where they just share the slide in Zoom. So I copied this. This is just stock image. We'll call him Steve. And there's fake Latin there because I don't want to point anyone out. But this is taken off, um, inspired by um, a mix of some of the presentations I've seen where they just leave a sli slide up like this for about 30 minutes and go through the content. Content is interesting. It's good. But a lot of the students um, uh, lose their interest or, or they give up trying because especially in a second language, it can be uh, very difficult. Um, and then, yeah, even if it wasn't a language difficulty, just having a, a bulleted list up there for 30 minutes is not very engaging. Uh, people can adjust the, the screen on their end. Uh, and in my case, I was projecting it to the, the classroom with someone else from abroad, and I had it about this size as a compromise. But rather than do it this way, we know, and we've known for a long time that doing it PIP, picture in picture, something like this. This is one of my students. And, you know, we've been looking at this for 70 years or something like that. The idea of watching someone, watching someone in a screen with visuals to complement their narrative um, is something we're very much used to. And it's a very engaging thing. So we want to try to do this kind of picture in picture effect. Not in all cases, uh, but in most cases, this will be more effective. And of course, uh, no visuals are better than using really lousy visuals. But uh, in most cases, having a good visual plus having a good connection with the audience would be much better. So what we can do then, of course, is use a virtual camera to use another application such as mm -hmm, which I often use in presentations and in uh, classes or seminars that I do online. But OBS, Ecamm, uh, Prezi uh, is really good as well. So this is mm -hmm, from their website. Uh, this is quite popular. It's good uh, for educators. There's a free version of it. And I think it's about $8 or something a month for the uh, paid version. So it's great. I mean, virtual cameras are awesome. Uh, but sometimes I just like to keep it really, really simple. I don't want to leave Zoom at all. And I don't want to share slides. But I do want to use visuals. So often I have to come on. Uh, for five or ten minutes as part of something larger so you know they'll go to me for 10 minutes and at that time i really don't want to share slides because then it's like okay just a minute let me share that can you see that um, so i like to just stay inside the frame like i am now but this is not a virtual camera this is actually just using the virtual background you know picture uh, function in zoom so that's what i'm doing right now so i'll link down below to a video i made about a year ago or I explained the two ways to do that. I call this the old way, but I actually like doing it this way. This this settings feature in the back under background and filters is really meant just as a way to show a background image. But actually, you can use it to show your slides. The the dimension is 16 by 9, so it's perfect for slides, uh, which you have to redesign to kind of have this space empty, or video. In fact, that's what that is is a video right there. Okay, so let's look um, at a hypothetical example, right, like this one. So we have this guy, Steve, he's giving a presentation about, you know, it could be something like college recruitment or uh, come work for us or, you know, any kind of situation. A doctor may be talking about uh, some medical procedure that's new, whatever. So let's say it's a college recruitment or a, a study abroad kind of thing. Study in Japan, he has 10 minutes or 20 minutes to give a presentation. And he's talking about the presentation seminar. So don't look at me, look at Steve. So it's, it's just a picture to <laughs> simulate this. So you could imagine this is much more engaging as he's going through the presentation seminar using this book. For, so I've never, I've never heard of that book. And he's showing pictures of the students and the methods and, that they use and, and so on. And let's say he, he asked uh, students, uh, have you ever been to Japan? Or when you think of Japan, what comes to mind? You probably think of, you know, big city like Tokyo, and the hustle and bustle, a fast pace, really exciting, uh, which is true. And that's great. But Japan is actually full of quiet, relaxing nature. In fact, 
Japan is mostly nature. Japan is mostly forest. So if you come study abroad in Japan, you'll have many opportunities outside the classroom to explore nature, um, to make friends <laughs> with monkeys, and we got deer and bears. Oh my, we have so much uh, nature and it's abundance of places to go, temples and shrines and so on. So study abroad in Japan. That was just, you know, could be an example. But let me show you some more. So again, I'm just in Zoom here. You could do something where you put PowerPoint slides or keynote slides that you made and then put them inside this space, which is itself just a slide. You could do something like this, have a, a space over your shoulder like this. So these are just slides, that all the white background here, not the most exciting slide, but just as an example, if you had something that you want to take people through, your students, or you could be a researcher. You know, this is big enough. I mean, the disadvantage is I can't write and so on, but the focus is on the presenter and the visuals are there that you can, you can point to and take your time and so on. So you can do it this way, which is a slide behind me, but you're not limited to just having a, a slide. It could be any kind of image in this space, right? Like the, a book cover or here's the same information, but just put directly onto the screen behind me or you could have formulas or, or whatever. Quotations are really nice. So this is all in the uh, virtual background settings. In fact, let me just pull it up here. So that's what I'm doing. I just pulled it into the screen. So you, know, you can go back if I wanted to go back there and so on. So it really does work. I mean, it, it's not great because you can't, you can't move things around. So it's not really designed for that. But if you're just doing a one-off you know, every once in a while you're coming in for 10 minutes or 30 minutes or you're part of a, a bigger conference and you don't have a virtual camera and you don't want to share slides, but you want to be in this sort of PIP uh, setting that I am in now, then this can work. So check it out down below. I'll put a link to a video I made a year ago that explains more uh, on how to do that. All right. Thanks very much. Bye bye. <laughs>